the Lord, everyone, and welcome to the Wednesday night Bible study. I'm back again. Um, Brian, that's for you. Um, anyway, pastor asked me if I'd be willing to do tonight's Bible study because uh, the person that had been originally scheduled to do it had a scheduling conflict and had to reschedule. So he asked me if I would do it, and I said, sure, why not? What a great opportunity. So here I am again doing this week's Bible study, and these will be the spiritual musings of a fellow Christian who's trying to muddle my way through the stinking coronavirus and the technology that I'm trying to do with this. So this is the second time I've done this tonight. Uh, the first time the computer crashed at 14 minutes, so we'll see if we can get out here and uh, without any problem. Um, I want to thank Pastor and Sister Hudson for the opportunity to again beat my head against the wall with technology and, and, and try to make this work and give you a coherent video. And I'm sure that somewhere out there right now he's probably sitting back and laughing at me and enjoying himself and let me tell you I will get you back one way or another. Um, so anyway, getting into the Bible study. Um, last week, Pastor asked us to look at our fears how they occurred and to diagnose them, where are they healthy or are they unhealthy? Um, you know, there are healthy and there are unhealthy fears. That's what he had talked about. Well, did you do that? Um, did you take some time to do a little bit of self-examination and to, to look into your, to your situation and the problems that we're having in our life? Um, uh, you know, we all deal with fear in one way or another. And, you know, it is an important issue. I, I think, you know, anybody that says that they're never scared of anything or never have fear are probably lying and um, you know so it's something that we all need to deal with um, and, and in that vein I guess I guess I'm uh, this week I'm going to expand on last week some with some of my thoughts and we'll just see where that leads us um, pastor said last week that not all fear is bad that some fear is very good for example I've always heard people say I'm not scared of the dark just what's in it well, that's kind of a humorous thing that kids like to say, you know, I'm not scared of the dark, I'm scared of what's in it. But spiritually, I think that actually holds a little water. Um, darkness is the realm of the enemy. Um, sin is described as darkness. Hell is referred to as outer darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth. Uh, evil people are said to have black souls or black hearts, you know, dark hearts. Um, we don't need to fear the darkness, but, or even what's in it, if we're living according to what God wants us to do and uh, living, you know, with our calling and election towards where God wants us to go, if we're in God's will, if we're in the Lord's will. But it also doesn't hurt to have a healthy respect for what is in the darkness because it is dangerous and it can hurt us. Um, I'm a very firm believer that we, be, we should never get so um, sure of ourselves and of our own self-defined holiness that we think that we're above being deceived by the enemy. Um, I think it's 100% true that God has this situation, whatever the situation is. He has everything under control. He's never surprised. He's never caught off guard. We are, but God's not. You know, he sees, you know, he sees everything. He, he's so far above us. Um, he will protect our back. He is our sword and our shield and our buckler. He is there to take care of us. But that's only if we submit to him. Um, if we allow ourselves to get outside of the umbrella of God's protection, we are in danger of disaster. Just like if you're a coal miner and you get out under out from underneath the, the uh, protection of the shield of the roof bolt, you might get squished. Um, it, it, it's just a very dangerous thing to leave God's protection. A good example of, of getting, uh, you know, getting yourself in trouble, um, the week after Thanksgiving last year, which was the second week of rifle season, Michelle and I spent a week in Hilton Head. Um, this was against everything I stand for because it was the second week of rifle season, but since I'd already killed a nice buck and she wanted to go, I decided why not. I mean, I'm, you know, how many people, how many deer does one person need to kill anyway? I mean, you'll have to ask Chad to get an answer for that. But um, it was a great trip, and sometime during the week we visited a park near our hotel that turns out that it had a lake, and that lake had alligators. And I didn't realize that alligators were out in December, even down in that part of the world, but they were. So, and I'd always thought they were neat, but I've never been around alligators other than maybe in a zoo or something. You know, you see them on TV. So when I saw one laying along the water's edge, I wanted, no, actually I needed to go check it out. I had to go see this thing because they're kind of cool. So I walked down to it and it was probably about five feet long. And I got to what I later decided was way too close, probably within about two or three feet of it. Um, if it had wanted to, it could have turned around and latched onto me and done some serious damage, maybe pulled me in the water or something. Uh, those things are fast and they have a lot of teeth. 
But fortunately, the Lord takes care of foolish people, and he took care of me in that situation. Um, later on, not too long after that, I saw what was at least a 12-foot alligator um, out in the water, and um, had that other one gotten me in the water, that one, the, the 12-footer probably could have devoured me. Um, basically, what it was, is I didn't know enough about what I was dealing with to be scared of the situation. Sometimes we knowingly or inadvertently mess with dark things that we have no business fooling with. Um, we're not scared because we don't know to be scared. Um, from what I gather, um, that there is healthy fear, like what the pastor was talking about last week, uh, like the fear of snakes. Um, there's nothing wrong with being scared of snakes. Um, talk to Chad, he'll tell you all about it. Um, but... Uh, there's also unhealthy fears, like the fear that we have when we doubt God, or the fear we have when we're unsure about our future because we haven't prayed enough to get God's direction in our lives. But then there's also the problem of having no fear, like I had with the alligator. You can call it ignorance, you can call it naivety, you can call it foolishness, you can call it whatever you want, but it's dangerous. Um, in Second Samuel, we read about Abner, um, in about the 22nd chapter, I think it was, who was leader of King Ishbosheth's army. Now, Ishbosheth was King Saul's son, and after King Saul and Jonathan had been killed in battle, um, they instated Ishbosheth as king over Israel. David assumed leadership of Judah. Um, Ishbosheth had Abner as his main general, and David had Joab as his main general of his army. And there was a big battle between these two armies, and the, the army of King David won the battle. So Joab's side won. Um, when this happened, when Abner's side lost, Abner fled the battlefield. When he left the battlefield, Asahel, which was uh, Joab's brother, chased Abner, and they chased him for a long ways. And Abner didn't want to kill him, and he kept telling him, turn to the right, turn to the left, stop, you know, back off. But uh, Asahel would not quit and eventually Abner took his sword and kind of put it behind him and stabbed and and got what they said uh, got him between the fifth rib and, and basically killed him um, right there along the side of the road and under, understandably Joab was pretty upset about this so he and his brother went after Abner and pursued him until Abner made it back to a larger part of his army and he was sort, sort of protected. Um, Second chapter, Second Samuel chapter three goes on to tell us that this war between both sides lasted for a long time. But as it went on, David's side became stronger and stronger. Abner, um, Ishbosheth's side became weaker and weaker. Eventually, there was a falling out between Ishbosheth and Abner. Um, situation is not important as to what caused it, but uh, Abner got pretty ticked off, and he went and talked to David and said, "Look." Uh, I'm done with this guy. I, I can, I can uh, deliver the kingdom into your hand. Um, all I need to do is, you know, I just want to make an alliance with you, which David, you know, he accepted him and he had, he had a feast for him. I think they must have got their, their differences sorted out and sent Abner along with his blessing. And, you know, Abner was going to take care of the situation. Um, but right after Abner left, Joab came back from another battle that he was in. He'd been pursuing somebody for something and came to the palace and found out that Abner had just been there and he was not pleased. Um, rather than accepting what David had set up, you know, with the with the uh, alliance between the sides, Abner sent a mess or Joab sent an, a messenger after Abner saying, "I need to talk to you." And when Abner came to Joab, walked up to him, Joab stuck a knife in him and killed him, murdered him right there on the spot. Abner was a brave man. He was a man of war. Some might say he had no fear. He was full of courage. He was full of you know uh, just the ability to to handle himself in battle. But that same confidence, or maybe the, the same ignorance, or the naivety, that's what got the man killed. He really needed to fear that situation, or at least be cautious of it, because his misplaced trust is what eventually caused his death. Um, how many times do you and I go skipping through life and completely miss the dangerous traps that the devil has laid for us because we trust ourselves or our instincts or our friends, but we forget to, to, to bring God into the equation. We forget to ask God's direction and pray and seek his face and find out what he wants us to do. Many have fallen because of this. You know, how many times have you seen husbands and wives that marriages are ruined because of a, a, a situation, a, an affair or something happened like that? Or how many times have you seen where, you know, someone that you would never expect it gets in trouble for embezzling money from a company or or you know or maybe just um, uh, betray someone 
trust um, in a situation. Um, people don't plan for these things to happen, but they don't pray, you know, if they're not praying up and, and being where they need to be to keep these things from happening. Um, the Bible says in Ephesians chapter 6 that we're, we are to put on the whole armor of God. And, and if you'll notice in that, in that scripture, the whole armor of God, not just part of it, everything. You know, so it says not just the helmet of salvation, not just the sword of the spirit. I mean, yeah, the helmet of salvation will help your head. And the sword of the spirit is, is, is a, uh, a weapon, but also the shield of faith. And our feet should be shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It also goes on to say that we need to be wearing the breastplate of righteousness and having our loins girt in truth. But the Bible also goes on to say in, in verse 18 of that chapter, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the spirit and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. Basically, we need to prepare ourselves spiritually and mentally, not just put the armor on. We need to be talking with God and letting God talk to us to keep us aware, keep our eyes open, to keep us aware of the fact that things could be, you know, the devil could be coming up with something to cause us problems. Um, you know, I know there have been times I've been hunting. I'll be sitting there in a tree stand just watching the world go by, daydreaming and have a deer walk right dead, dead smack under me because I wasn't paying attention. I wasn't aware. If we're praying with God, or praying to God rather, asking for direction and asking for guidance, we're not going to get complacent. We're not going to be staring watching the squirrel over there. We're going to be realizing that the enemy is coming up behind us and laying plans and trying to cause us problems. Um, we need to be armored for our protection, but we need to be prayed up and to be watchful. Holes in our armor, that can let uh, arrows of doubt, arrow, arrows of fear, arrows of you know spiritual oppression get in. But not being prepared prayerfully is as bad if not worse. And that way the devil can infiltrate through our complete armor and get in. There's nothing worse than the, in, than the enemy getting into an impregnable, impregnable defense because some dingling forgot to lock the door, right? Well, there are countless times that I've gotten myself in trouble or at least in displeasure with God because I try to do things with, by myself without asking for God's help or direction or by trying to cut corners, by not putting on all the armor, um, the whole uniform, the whole outfit, as Michelle likes to say. Why? It takes time. It takes effort. It takes preparation, and it's hard. You know, I just sometimes we just don't feel like doing it. But if we are, have that attitude, we're going to end up in, in problems. Um, think, for example, if you're getting your car worked on. What if the mechanic decides, you know, um, well, you know, you've got five lug nuts and the, and the factory specs say that they should be set to 120 pounds per square inch, but I'm going to do it for 20 pounds because I'm kind of busy and, you know, it doesn't matter anyway. Well, I will tell you from experience, don't do that. I did that one time years ago, didn't tighten the lug nuts up, lug nuts up right, and I was coming down Dorsey's knob and the front wheel just about came off my truck. It ruined the wheel, it ruined the hub, it tore up a bunch of stuff I had to pay for a tow bill and I, thankfully it didn't come off the truck or I would have probably wrecked and went over the hill so cutting corners can get you in trouble mechanically and cutting corners spiritually can get you in trouble spiritually and we don't need that um, back to where we were talking earlier fear you know we, we have the armor of God to protect us but it's and we should be confident in the fact that God is there. God is taking care of us. God is, God is in control. But we should also be cognizant of the fact that it is quite possible that, you know, something that's going to come up that the enemy has brought that we're not expecting could cause us to have problems. A healthy fear is a good thing to have at times. Not, not a fear that I'm going to fail because God doesn't have this because I know God has it. Uh, maybe a fear more of like a respect Maybe a fear more like uh, being aware of what's going on around us. I have healthy fears in my life. I have a fear of heights because I know by experience, if you fall out of a tree stand, it hurts. I have a fear of fire because I know it burns. I have a fear of pain because I know it hurts. I have a fear of death because, well, that's the end, right? But fire keeps us warm and allows us to eat warm food and be warm during the winter. And pain tells me if there's something wrong with my body, you know, that it needs to be taken care of. And we all know that death is just the beginning for us to live as Christ, but to die is gain. So there's 
probably a little healthy fear in a lot of things, or maybe everything should have a little bit of healthy fear. I'm not sure how to put that. <coughs> Excuse me. For example, it's good to fear God. We need to have a reverence. We need to have an awe of God. We need to have a realization that our righteousness is but filthy rags. No matter how good I think I am, I'm not. I need to have a reverence for the fact that I know God is in control and that he controls my destiny. But that fear should also give me courage, which is the opposite of fear. How would fear give me courage? Because I know that he's got my back. Even though I'm fearful of the situation, um, God's got my back, like I said in the beginning. Um, the beauty is that our fear can become courage. And courage is a great thing to have. If you were to talk to a veteran who had been in battle, I'll bet you they tell you they had some fear. Um, but fearful situations can create heroes. People that have won the Congressional Medal of Honor do some amazing things or win a silver star do amazing things, but I'll guarantee you they were scared. Um, one dictionary describes courage as the ability to do something that frightens a person or having strength in the face of pain or grief. Do you notice there in the first part of the definition it said something that frightens persons. So fear can cause courage. We all want to be courageous, but in order to be courageous, we have to deal with our fear. So what is courage? Courage is doing the right thing when the wrong thing is easier. Courage is standing up for what you believe in when the world tells you you're wrong. Courage is facing the enemy when the odds are against you. Uh, Philippians 4.19 says, But my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So what do we know about fear? Fear can be healthy. Fear can be unhealthy. We learned that last week. Fear can create courage and fear can make heroes. We all want to be heroes for Christ, but we're going to have to confront our fears and able to do that. How do we confront our fears? Put on the whole armor of God. Pray. Get prayed up. Stay strong. God will take care of us. So I ask you today, are you a fraidy cat or are you a hero? If you are a fraidy cat, do you want to be a hero? The same situation can, either make, can make you either one depending on how you react. And your reaction is going to be based on the strength of your relationship with God. It's going to be based on the fact, are you wearing the armor of God, the incomplete total armor of God? Are you praying? Are you prayed up? Are you in God's will? Are you doing what God wants you to do? Give God the opportunity to help you become a hero. Now, you know, that pretty much wraps up what I've got. But we want to be heroes for Christ. And, you know, God doesn't need me to be a hero. But I've been put on this earth for a reason, whether I know what that reason is or not. We're here to help one another. We're here to love one another. We're here to support one another, um, whether that's in the church, whether that's in families, whether that's in the community. So our, our, our goal is to, to be heroes one for another, which takes courage. Sometimes we don't want to step out um, and, and do the right thing because, you know, the effort, the, the fear, whatever. We need to realize that that fear, the enemy puts the fear in there because the fear is a very powerful weapon. You know, and he can use that to, to hold us back and to cause us to have problems. But we need to be looking forward uh, for the, 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 the right direction that God has given us, the direction that he wants us to go. And ultimately, we will get there if we, if we follow after Christ and get in his word. I hope you guys have a great week. I pray that, uh, you know, that everything is going well for everybody sooner or later. You know, yes, we are back in church sooner or later. Wouldn't it be nice to go to church and not have to wear masks and not have to be socially distanced and be able to actually shake someone's hand? Um, I hope that everybody's doing well, and I pray that uh, we get to see each other soon. And uh, you guys have a great week, and you take care. Bye-bye.